Australian sport has had a scandal-ridden year and it's just got worse. The Victorian Premier League soccer is implicated in a multi-million dollar international match-fixing match syndicate. Detectives in Melbourne today charged six men with corruption as part of an ongoing investigation into the racket. At the centre of the allegations is the Southern Stars Soccer Club. Its management denies any knowledge or involvement in match-fixing. But, as Greg Hoy reports, authorities allege that those accused of involvement cooperated with an international syndicate to rig Australian matches at the behest of a mastermind well known to sports regulators around the world. There's already more than $300 million a year wagered on sport in Australia, with big gamblers in Asia betting far more through international betting agencies. Perhaps it was inevitable an Australian football code would one day be compromised by organised crime. It's hardly surprising to me, and it should be hardly surprising to the Australian public. Match fixing has been going on for uh, years in, in sport, uh, particularly uh, in football. It's been probably a, a peak over the last five years, certainly, because of the uh, enormity of the gambling market out of Southeast Asia. Uh, Australia cannot be immune. No country's immune. Victoria Police today charged six people in relation to a $2 million match-fixing ring centred on the Melbourne Southern Stars soccer team. The Police Sporting Integrity Intelligence Unit alleges the match-fixing involved various players, many recruited from Britain, and the coach at the Southern Stars, which plays in the second-tier Victoria Premier League. There are some, uh, some indicators there, yes, that uh, perhaps uh, alarm bells should have been ringing, but uh, again, when we get into the lower levels of, uh, of sport, uh, perhaps the message uh, didn't come through as loudly as it might have if it had been at a higher level. It appears the Victorian match-fixing ring was masterminded from Asia by this man, Singaporean national Wilson Raj Peramal, whose criminal reputation precedes him. I've been following Perrimor for four years, really. He's one of the most prolific match fixers in the, uh, in the world. Australian Chris Eaton is one of the leading anti-sports fixing investigators in the world. I'm head of security at FIFA. The former head of security at the World Soccer Federation, FIFA, Chris Eaton now heads investigations at the International Centre for Sports Security based in the Middle East, where he has been tracking the global master of match rigging in soccer, Wilston Raj Perumal. He's a, a Tamil Indian of origin, but uh, a Singaporean national. He's been fixing for 15 years minimum, uh, football matches mostly. He's uh, uh, currently in Hungary assisting police with uh, the prosecution of uh, players and, uh, and officials and referees. He had served a year and a half in prison in Finland before that for match fixing in Finland. He had served prison in uh, Singapore for match fixing. This guy had a very high profile internationally. If it's true the allegations are here in the public here in uh, Australia, if he's involved he's doing it under the noses of the very police he's, he's assisting in Hungary. As early as February this year, soccer had been warned by police that it may well be targeted. At the moment, as things presently stand, is, is soccer, and particularly A-League soccer. Uh, we're seeing vast increases in the betting pools in Asia on A-League soccer. Uh, and I think, as I said this morning, I think we had over 40 million in one, just with one uh, Asian bookmaker alone, uh, one of the legal bookmakers on, uh, on, a, a, on, a, on an A-League match uh, here in Victoria. So um, certainly soccer's, we think, set a big risk. Not everyone heeded the warning. The big local online betting agency Sporting Bet sponsored the Southern Stars team in Victoria. The Football Federation of Australia, however, hired an international betting monitoring agent called Sport Radar to stay on the lookout, with the Southern Stars, seen here in white, languishing at the bottom of the league and suspiciously thrashed on several occasions. The alarm was raised. 
in August, I understand that Sport Radar alerted FFA to some unusual betting patterns, some unusual bets that have been placed on uh, on matches in uh, the, the second level of uh, football in Victoria. Uh, FFA then referred that immediately to the Victoria Police. Uh, Victoria Police has been very proactive in setting up a, a sports betting unit, a sports corruption unit. Uh, they were onto it uh, pretty much straight away and we see a short time after that charges being Laid. Just two weeks ago, the World Soccer Federation FIFA warned that the rise of match fixing poses a global threat to the future of football. Sport integrity expert Chris Eaton agrees. Governments acting alone will not be able to solve the problem. This is globally roaming crime. Crime. It is big, it's global, it's organised. And when you have you know, national responses that are not organised internationally, that are not global, that are not big, then you are kicking against the pricks here. These guys are, they need to be faced and confronted in a concerted international way. Do you think that enough is being done to regulate sports betting agencies, say in Australia? Oh, I think so. I think Australia, Europe, uh, the USA are standouts. The rest of the world is a, a mixed bag. For the most part, in, uh, in Southeast Asia, it is very poorly regulated. As this scandal erupted last night, Sporting Bet suspended its sponsorship of the Southern Stars, claiming financial losses on the disgraced team were mostly sustained by foreign gamblers and betting agencies, though it has still set alarm bells ringing in Australia. We see now potentially 10-year jail terms for match fixing. Uh, the, the sports have been pushing more recently for uh, police forces to be able to provide them with information. So we see in this case the sport providing the police force with information. We'd like that to be a two-way street where uh, police forces, when, when they obtain information from phone tapping or other sources, can provide that to sports on a confidential basis to the anti-corruption units of the sports so that sports are alert to these issues as well. Greg Hoy reporting.